how many saints do we have in the Philippines? Mm-hmm. Some of you don't even know that, right? Only two saints we have. How come? Have you wondered about that? I'll give you the answer. We have only two saints because we were never persecuted. And the saints that we have, we exported them first as missionaries. There they were martyred and they became saints. Many, many, many years after, centuries after. Because there's no persecution physically that challenges our faith, we have lost a lot of that. And we have also lost our courage to dream. To dream of what? To dream of defending this faith and to show everybody, this is my faith. Don't destroy it. The persecution we're suffering today in the Philippines, especially among the young people, is the persecution which I call moral persecution. Temptation hits you left and right. Even our thinking is being destroyed by the secular world. And oftentimes, we forget about our faith. The greatest challenge and extremest challenge is to defend your faith. Once Jesus touches your soul and touches your heart, you open up to dreams that you want to be with Him. But it starts here in the world that you have to fight for your faith. Fighting for your faith is being gentle, being positive in life. And most explicitly, you have to go against the obstruction of destroying your faith morally. All together come in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With great gratitude in your heart, stretch your hands out and say, Today I receive all of God's love for me. Come on. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing and miracles. Today I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I'm not going to preach you the word today. Instead, I'm going to call a very good friend. He's somebody that you know of. Are there any young people here? All the young people, can I hear from you? The young ones, once upon a time. I'm going to call the builder of the youth high, none other than Mr. Shoppy himself. Please give a warm welcome, Brother Tony Valenzuela. I want to share you that, that we want to preach to you this big message today. God is setting you free. God is setting you free. Can you put your hands over your chest and tell to yourself right here, right now, God is setting me free. And last week, we started unraveling this amazing story of how God was asking Abraham to sacrifice his one and only son, Isaac. And the craziest thing about this story is not just the request, but that Abraham said yes. Who, who loving and caring and protective parent would tell yes to a request like this? But for Abraham to say this yes, it takes more than just courageous obedience. It takes courageous faith. Can you say with me? Courageous faith. And to continue this story, let's go to Scripture in Genesis 22, 9 to 14. This is that point where Abraham was already walking up the hills of Moriah with his son Isaac. And here's the Scripture. Let's read it together. One, two, three, go. When they came to the place which God had told him about, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. He tied up his son. Can you repeat that? He tied up his son and placed him on the altar and on top of the wood. Then he picked up the knife to kill him. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, he answered, Yes, here I am. Don't hurt the boy or do anything to him, he said. Now I know that you honor and obey God 
because you have not kept back your only son from him. Abraham looked around and saw a ram caught in a bush by its horns and he went and got it and offered it as a burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham named that place. Can we say it again? Now I know some of you are thinking or you've heard this story before. You're asking yourself, why would God ask something this cruel from Abraham? Is, is God this horrible, this sadistic to ask Abraham to kill his son? Just imagine this poor old man, maybe in his 80s, maybe in his 90s, baka mas matanda pa, maybe he's older. And, and for three days while they were walking up the hills of Moriah, he's, he's contemplating how to kill his son. He's being torn whether I should do this or should I not do this? Will it be a quick death? Will it be a slow death? Or will I just slit his throat? And then at the end, God will say, I... Joke lang. Diba? It sounds really weird that God would ask this. But here's the thing. You can't just look at a story like this from the Bible that was written 3,000 years ago in ancient Hebrew and look at it from the eyes, our eyes of the 21st century. You have to replace your eyeglasses, your perspective, and see this story from the writer's perspective, from the context and the world that Abraham is coming from. And when I say world, I mean the culture, yung lingwahe, the language, and even the mindset. Relate na relate ako dito kasi ako ay isang Pinoy. Pero lumaki ako sa ibang bansa. I was born and grew up in a Middle Eastern country, the small island called the Kingdom of Bahrain. And I grew up there and I sabi ko, Lord, bakit ganun pangalan? Desert island, pero... Walang baha, walang rain. Pero bakit pangalan Bahrain? Ay, mabuti man, patok yung joke ko dito. Okay. <laughs> but Bahrain, Bahrain, as you pronounce it, it has the guttural sound sa H. Bahrain is in Arabic, it means Pearl of the Gulf. Tapos nung lumipat ako dito sa Pilipinas, the Philippines is known as the Pearl of? Oh, di ba? Pearl to Pearl, di ba? Parang P2P lang yan. Di ba? But one experience I want to share is that when I moved here to the Philippines in Manila in 2001, I took another vacation after my first year here in college. I took a one-month vacation. And we brothers and sisters, as you can see in the picture, I have a picture of my family on the screen. And we all spoke English. We were speaking in, we, our English there is British English. So our social class was a little bit higher perhaps than the others. Yes, uh, quite classy. But your English nami talagang British English ang pinag-aaralan namin. We studied there. But then, when this particular vacation, we went to a Burger King branch. And because there are so many OFWs in Bahrain as well, there were Filipinas in the cashier counter. And when me and my brother were going towards the counter, we were ordering, Bro, what order do you want? You want the Whooper Jr., the Big Fries, the Large Coke? It's on me. It's on me, bro. Pero... When we were talking, I could hear the Filipino cashiers saying, Uy, mare, guapo, guapo. <laughs> Pero dead malang ako. Tapos after deciding what order we would take, lumapit na ako sa counter. Ah, miss, pwede po yung Whopper Jr. Ay, Pilipino pala kayo, sir. I could see her flush red. But my point here is that the context, yun tuloy, ang feeling namin mga kapatid, hindi, hindi kami swak sa Bahrain. Pero pag lumapit kami sa mga Pilipino, we look foreigner. So we were parang out of place. We couldn't put ourselves in a certain context. Now going back to the story of Abraham and Isaac, you would think, how can we do that? How can we put our eyes of modern century and into the context of 3,000 years ago? But here's the thing. If you notice in the story, if you read the story, there's the first line that the author puts there. There's a lesson here. And he says there in the first line, Soon after that time, God tested Abraham. That was the first line of the story. May clue tayo jan. God would test Abraham. Not only is God testing Abraham in this story, but like all of us here, we are always tested. We were tested. We are going to be tested. We are going to face trials. We are going to face tragedies. Because human life in this world is a journey of letting go of our Isaacs. But what is our Isaac? Ano yung Isaac natin? An Isaac is an attachment that gives you fragile peace, temporary pleasure, 
or that pride that you're having a hard time to let go. Pakisabi sa katabi, friend, let go of your Isaac today. I hate to burst your bubble, friends. Pero this fragile peace won't satisfy you. But God wants to replace this fragile peace with a forever peace. Amen? But this forever peace is not a what. It is not a what. This forever peace is a who. Who is your forever peace? Because Jesus in John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Tell to the person beside you, God is setting you free. Everybody say this with me. This year. This year. Is my best year ever. You believe in that? Make it happen. Make it happen. Make it happen. Make it happen. What I love about this series, ask me what? You know, we're talking about courage. This is the first time I think, I mean, we've been doing the feast for years now, but I think this is the first series ever where we're, we only have one foundational Bible story. God asking Abraham to offer his own son Isaac as a sacrifice. One Bible story for four talks. I love it because we can really unpack the story and we can really dissect and, and get one message per Sunday. And, and this is the message for this Sunday that God wants to set you free. And that, you know, if you really, really think about it, the ultimate measure of your entire human existence, ask me what? Spiritual growth. It's not financial growth, it's not material, it's, it's not fin physical, it's spiritual growth. That's, that's, that's what life is all about. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as your, it's spiritual growth. That's the goal. But to be able to grow spiritually, there's a key. One important key, ask me what again? What? Letting go of your attachments. One of the keys of spiritual growth is, everybody say this with me, letting go. What is an Isaac? An Isaac, I'm going to review what Tony said. It's an attachment to something that will give you fragile peace. And your whole existence, your whole human life, is a series, everybody say series, series, of letting go of attachments. You're going to find that out as you're younger in the Lord and then you grow in closer to God. God will ask you again and again, let go, let go, let go of this attachment. Okay, you're done with that. Let go of this other attachment. You're done with that? Fine, wonderful. Next month, God will say, okay, let go of this one. Next year, God will say, you, you've let go of that, of that, of that, of that. This time, you have to let go of this one. Am I making sense to you? Now, why is letting go important? Ask me why again. There was an anthropologist. He went to Africa. He was studying a tribe that captured monkeys in a very, very specific way. They would get a coconut. I don't know if you read about this. It's a very, very popular story. That they would get a coconut, and then they will put a hole in the coconut. And then what they would do to capture um, monkeys is they would get a banana and then they will put the banana inside the hole and when they put the banana inside the hole the hole is small and big enough for the hand of the monkey to effortlessly grab the banana from the inside but here's the trick the, the hole is small to the point that if the hand of the monkey is holding the banana, he won't be able to pull out his hand. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? And so it's pretty easy to capture a small monkey dragging behind him a heavy coconut. It does not hit his monkey brain that all he has to do is let go and he'll be free. But no, he wants the banana. And he will not let go of the banana. And he gets captured. My dear friend, this is the story of our lives. We are so attached to something. 
And we get caught. We get caught into all sorts of misery, all sorts of troubles, because we do not want to let go of our Isaac. I want you to elbow somebody beside you, break his rib cage, and tell that person, do not be like a monkey. Because that's the story of our lives. We're so attached to this person. This person is actually bad for you, but you're attached. Or you're attached to a particular bad habit, and it, man, it's destructive. It's destroying you, but you're attached. And, and you don't want to let go. You know what? Ask me what? Sometimes your Isaac is not bad. Sometimes your Isaac it's a good thing. It really is a good thing. Some of your Isaacs are bad, okay? Destructive habits, resentment, pride, stubbornness, a bad relationship. Some of them are bad. Tell somebody beside you, let go. And it's pretty obvious, like right? It's pretty an abusive boyfriend. Somebody who neglects you, takes you for granted, but I love him. 99 of your 100 friends are telling you, get rid of that jerk. I can't. <laughs> Sometimes it's so obvious that you have to get rid of that person, get rid of that bad habit, get rid of that resentment and unforgiveness, that pride. It's so obvious and we need to let go. But sometimes, everybody say sometimes. It's not very obvious because the ice act is actually good. It's actually good, but you're so attached to this good thing that you are expecting from this good thing. I hope you're listening. Everybody say, I'm listening. You're expecting from this good thing a thing that only God can give you. Actually, that relationship that you have is very good, but you're attached to it to the point that God is no longer number one in your life. That job is actually a good thing. That money is actually a good thing. But you're depending on that money, on that person, on that relationship, on that job, instead of depending on God. Now, all these good things, they give you peace, but it's fragile peace. And that's why you're always on shaky ground. That relationship that you have, good person, good relationship, but guess what? A day will come, that person will not be there. That person might change. That person might die. And what will happen to you if that person is an attachment? I hope you're listening to me. There are two ways by which we let go. How many? Number one is through choice. Everybody say choice. Number two is by circumstance. Say circumstance. The first is by choice, when actually God says to you, let go, let go. You know, this is my 40th year of walking with the Lord. I came to know Jesus when I was 12. I'm, I'm, I'm now 52. It's 40 years. Crazy. Absolutely. I know, I know. I, I, I look 39, but, but <laughs> 13 years old. I was 13 my attachment was TV. I was a TV addict. I was a walking Google for TV. My sisters want to know what's showing, what, when, what channel. <laughs> Ask me. I was 13. My sister would say, Bo, what's showing at 7.30 Friday evening, channel 7? Without batting an eyelash, Little House in the Prairie, Michael Landon, Melissa Sue Anderson and Melissa Gilbert. 98% of the room are like, what's that? <laughs> Sorry, Jurassic World, okay? That, that's, that's, a, that's a long, long time ago. And, and, and I, that, that was me. I, I love TV. I watch TV every day, many hours a day. And then when I was 13 years old, I really felt God telling me, Bo, can you give up that attachment? <gasps> okay. <gasps> okay. 13-year-old ah. kid. That was not normal, but I did. I actually gave it up. And when I gave it up, all of a sudden, I woke up one day and I felt, wow, 
I've got so many R's in the day. And I started using those R's to, you know, serve God in ministry, to read the Bible, and that's so many R's. So that was my first ever Isaac I ever gave to God. I was 13 years old. You know, and I had so many other Isaacs as the years went by. I remember when I was 20 years old, I had a girlfriend. But there was this nagging feeling in me, nagging sense that we were not good for each other and that we were not growing in the Lord together. And I felt God tell me, give her up. And we broke up. And then for five years, I had no girlfriend, none. And, and I have focused on my growth, focused on my development, focused on my expansion. It was beautiful. And when I was 25 years old, five years later, I felt it was ripe to have a new relationship. Like, like you know, five years given to the Lord, yay! So 25, found a girl, matched my criteria, courted her, you know, gave her mushy love songs and chocolate and after three months of courting her she told me the five words that every suitor dreads to hear can we just be friends <laughs> not only that she added five more words it's not you it's me. <laughs> now, of course, you know, when I think about it, I say, you know, I mean, think, th I mean th who would reject me? Huh? <laughs> but anyway, I'm just kidding. I was devastated. And I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, you know, five years ago, I gave up my girlfriend. I was thinking you would reward me a bit, <laughs> like, like reward me now after five years. And God says, no, you know. And so, Six more years, no girlfriend. So 11 years in all. And I want to thank God, like looking back, I want to thank God that that girl said no. You know why? Because 11 years later, Maru became my girlfriend. The best thing that ever happened to me. And yes, God will reward you when you give up your Isaac, but He will reward you according to His way not your way. Make sense? And then, fast forward, got married, had kids, had little babies. I was 35, 34, 35 years old, gave up another Isaac. Here's my Isaac. I want you to know this. I love my work. You put me in a cafe, you put a computer, a laptop in front of me, and the screen is empty, I go wild. My craft is imagination. And when I write something, a book, a talk, whatever, it, I'm in paradise. I'm, I'm in a different world. I love my work. And then, little human beings will come up to me, grab my leg, grab my fingers from the keyboard, and say, Daddy, can you play with me? And he'll pull me, like pull. You know what? I really felt this. God spoke to my heart. God said, Bo, spend time with your boys. And for, for some of you, like maybe it's easy for you, but when you love your work the way I love my work, like, like, I want, it's, it's almost like a drug for me. Like when I'm writing, it's like, man, I've, I've got adrenaline and I've, there, there's so much dopamine in my body and oxytocin, those are natural hormones by the way, I'm not shooting anything, but, but just when I'm writing, it's just boom, it's like, wow, fantastic. Daddy, can you play with me? Whoa, wait, 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 okay. And I sit down on the floor and we play Pokemon. R after R after R, every day, every week, every month, spending time with my boys. My eldest son is 18. My second son is 13 years old. I look at both of them now. They're following Jesus. They love Jesus. And I say, all those R's spent on the floor playing with Pokemon and them, it's all worth it.
It's all worth it. And I want to say that to you. You know, when you follow God, God's going to tell you, give up your Isaac. And sometimes Isaac is a good thing. It is. But God is saying, no, there's something more important. That's why I'm asking you to give it up. And then when I was 45, after investing, after growing my little business, I had some money already, I realized something. It's very different to be generous when you have no money and to be generous when you have money. Like for years, I was poor, but I was generous. I, I would give more than my tithes, you know? What's 10%? No, I want to give more. Even if you have no money, even if I don't have money, even if I have very little money, I'll still give. I loved it. But then when I was 45, all, all, you know, this whole thing that I'm teaching you guys, how to invest, man, it works. At a certain point, boom, <laughs> money explodes. It's like, whoa, after, after 15 years of investing, it, 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 it did grow. Whoa, thank you, Lord. And then God speaks to my heart, give more. Huh? I'm, I'm giving more already, Lord. No, 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 give more. What? I don't know any person who gives more than me. Hello? Give more. That was painful. But you know what? Did it. Gave it. And you just can't imagine the overflowing peace that comes into your life when you give your Isaac and tell God that he's the most important possession and treasure that you have in your heart. It blows your mind. So sometimes God gives you a choice. Let go. Letting go by choice. Sometimes it's letting go by circumstance. You have no choice. Life takes it away from you. Three ways. When you lose a property, have you ever lost material things through, through a, I don't know, a fire, flood, calamity, someone steals from you, a scam. Raise your hand if you ever lost something. You forgot something in the cab, your cell phone. That happened to me 33 times. <laughs> and every time you lose something materially, God is calling you to grow spiritually. Every time, every time you lose something materially. Remember that. It's an opportunity to grow spiritually, to let go and make God your treasure. Am I making sense? I bring people to the Holy Land once a year. My pilgrims, they're an amazing bunch of people. Love them. But if there's one thing that I see among almost all of them, is that they've got these huge luggages for a 10-day, 12-day trip. Huge bags. It's like, I want to ask them, my gosh, your bag is so big. What's there? Your piano? <laughs> your ref? <laughs> big bag. But there was this one woman who joined my pilgrimage, and she was different from all the rest. While everyone else had this incredible, massive bag, she, was, she had this carry-on. She did not check in. She, all she, she had was this little itsy-bitsy bag. And people around her, all the other pilgrims were like, how do you do that? No, no big bag? And she said, no, none. She smiled. And when they insist and ask her, Tell me, tell me, what happened? Why, 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 why do you live like this? And she, she, she will tell her story. She said, many years ago, I was living in Marikina. And there was a big storm. And there was a big flood. And it was a flash flood. And I almost died. Thankfully, I climbed the roof of my house. I sat on the roof of my house for eight long days. Ours, under the rain. And at that moment, she said, when I realized that every material thing I had was lost, destroyed, and now 
under 23 feet of water. At that moment, I had this most amazing spiritual experience. I realized I really had only one treasure, and his name was Jesus. And it was okay. At that moment, sitting in the roof of my house, witnessing the destruction of everything I possessed, I let go. And I said, Lord, thank you for giving me life. Thank you for giving me breath. I'm still alive. And I have you. And I'm happy. It was a beautiful experience for her. And there are times in your life, my dear friends, when God will allow the loss of property only so that you can realize that Jesus will be your only treasure. And that is spiritual growth. That, my dear friends, is freedom. It is amazing when you are not attached. The key is to appreciate them, but not to be attached to them. Amen? Very important. Number two, when we lose persons, everybody say persons. When your loved one betrays you, cheats on you, when a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife abandons you for someone else, very painful. Are you listening to me? Very painful. And you know, it doesn't have to be someone sinning against you. It could just be the course of human existence. My boys, they're teenagers now. A day will come, my wife and I are getting ready for it, when we will have to let go of them because they'll get married and they'll have families of... You, you got what I'm saying? Letting go is a natural course of your human life. It is normal. It is natural. You've got to learn to let go. Even death. I lost my sister last year from cancer. All of us were not ready, but we let go. Death will come. A woman came up to me after one feast, weeping. She told me, May tampoco kay Lord. I'm angry at God. I was asking God to extend the life of my mom. But no, He took her away. She was weeping and weeping and I prayed for her and I gave her a hug. And After that, I said, how old was your mom? You know what her answer was? 84. And a part of me said, 84? But then it struck me. This is the stark reality of life. You're never ready. Whether your loved one is 84 or 44 or 24, it does not matter. We want them, our loved ones, to be with us forever until our last own breath exists. Well, we, we, want, we want them there. But no, life is a series of... Letting go. We, we want our mothers to, to live with us. We want them to, 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 to be alive until they're 136. But no, a point comes when we let go. You should, you and I, you should master the art and the skill of letting go. And you will have more peace in your life. Your inner peace must never come from any human being. It must never come from any possession. It must only come from the Prince of Peace. That's the message. So you will lose properties, you will lose persons, you, you might even lose positions. So I say positions. And sometimes that's painful. You get bypassed in the office. You're supposed to get the promotion and then some new 
new kid gets it and they promote him. Ouch. You don't get that job. Or, or you, 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 had, you had this nice title. You had ni this nice title a few years back. Then you had to retire. And then you go back to that office and they don't even recognize you. Ouch. Sometimes it's as simple as this. Can, we, can I share you one last story? This is a very shallow, very simple story, but I'll share it anyway. It's, uh, I was, years ago, I was in a mall. I was going to go to the bookstore. It was pretty late. Before I entered the bookstore, like, like I, was, I, was, I was already walking in. The security guard, probably in a bad mood, I don't know, wearing shades, made his unsmiling face even more menacing. Like, like I, was, I was about to step in the bookstore and he puts himself right in front of me, not smiling, not speaking a word and, and, and doing this. Like, like to my face. It's like he could have said, sir, sorry, closing time. He could have said that, right, with a smile. No. But, and I'm embarrassed to say this, but want you to know, I, I, you know what was the, the dialogue in my brain? I wanted to say, do you know who I am? <laughs> I'm, I was there and I said, hello, you know, what's, what's wrong with you? What's your problem? Eh. You know, why are you so rude? Hello, I'm a best-selling author. <laughs> My books are in that bookstore. I am a personal friend of the owner of the bookstore. Nane Kuring and me, like this. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to say that. I really did. I, was, I felt insulted. I felt, but you know what? I, I was there. Thanks be to God for the Holy Spirit. You know, Holy Spirit, wonderful. Thanks be to God. I, that, was, I, that was my reaction inside. Turned around. <laughs> I turned around. And then I, I, I got my heart and, and all my, you know, the, 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 the feelings of annoyance, the irritation. I just lifted it all up to God. I felt God smiling at me. I really did. And I felt God tell me, Bo, let go of your attachment to VIP treatment. <laughs> because, you know, everywhere I go, like, like people, oh, it's Brother Bo, please come in. Oh, it's Brother Bo. And then this guard comes and shoves his hand at my, at my face. And it was beautiful when, when I said, okay, Lord, I'm letting go. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then I let go. You know, I, I shouldn't be attached to anything. I really should not be attached to anything but you. And when I did that, my heart was flooded with beautiful peace. And Ako si Kaloy Dimson, ang uh, operations head ng Anawim. Ako po'y uh, uh, isang naglingkod dito sa Anawim 2007. Napunta ako dito sa Anawim because uh, one time yung nurse ng Anawim naghahanap ng social worker. Uh, ako ay isang social work graduate. It's a big blessing na sinabi niya, ate kung gusto mo mag-social uh, work, pwede kang mag-apply. Kup-kup ko ako ng pare. At ako po ay patulong-tulong lang po doon hanggang sa ako ay nai-refer dito dahil na-find out nila talagang orban ako. Nung napunta po ako dito sa Anawin, na-upset po ako at saka na-depress. Pero sa pagtagal-tagal ko po dito, naisip ko na ba't ako madi-depress, ba't ako ma-upset. Instead, it's a big blessing for me and I'm really very grateful that we have Anna Wing. Hinala ko ang kapatid ko mag-dito dito sa Anna Wing. Wala akong naramdaman na natakot ko sa'yo naman dito. Hindi na ako nagsisipok ng gaw, hindi ako nangangako. Hindi na ako nagluluto. Dito, kakain ka na lang. Ang 
maglikod sa ating matatanda, hindi yan basta-basta lang. Kasi kailangan ng mahabang pangunawa, pasensya because we all know naman na ang mga lola dito, they are abandoned and rejected by their families, na talagang sila may mabibigat sa kanilang dibdib na. Nandito kami para yung mga bigat nila ay through communication, pinapapil namin na lab namin sila at still sila ay importante pa dito sa mundo. Maraming mga challenges bilang isang mamahala. Una ito yung funding. Without fund, talagang hindi mo ma-push kung ano yung gusto mong proyekto na gagawin. Hindi rin maganda ang pag-aalaga kapag kapag ng pondo. Pinagdadasal po po lahat yan. Yung mga board of trustees, yung mga management and staff, pahabain niyo pa po ang buhay nila. Gabi ko. It's not because of anything else. I'm really very grateful there is Anna Wynne. Hindi kasi pag may nagpumunta ng tumutulong ko, pinapupunta kami rito. Siyempre naman papasalamat ako sa mga tumutulong mga. Sa lahat ng mga donors na nagbibigay ng kanilang blessing dito sa Anna Wim, kami po ito puso nagpapasalamat at uh, ito ay malaking biyaya na aming natatanggap. Your support, your help financially or in kind, grabe. Maraming mapupuntahan, maraming masisiyahan. And yung aming pagtulong sa mga elderly ay ma-extend pa, dadami pa, dadami pang mga elderly ang matutulungan because of you. To all the donors and sponsors of, uh, and benefactors of Anogin, thank you so much for everything. And I hope you'll continue all the blessings you are giving us. And I thank God for all of you. Especially, thank you for all the love. Thank you for the love. God bless and thank you for the love. Thank you for the love. Thank you so much for being part of this show and thank you for being part of this ministry. You know what? I need your help. Without you, we can't do this. We won't be able to bring God's love to many more people through this TV show without you. And you know, your contribution, your prayer, your, your being there is such a blessing. For any amount that you want to help us, my way of thanking you is sending you the first talk of our message and courage. It will bless your life. And for 2,000 peso gift or more, I'll not only give you this one message, but the entire series on courage, all the talks, this powerful message will just your life, you know, you think about it, you need bravery, you need courage to be able to go cross that, that chasm that's there. It's an obstacle and, and this, the messages here will bless you, your family, your friends, you know, you can share it to other people. Plus, I'm gonna send also to your home my book, Limitless. Yes, the blessings of God are limitless. I pray that it will open your mind. So. For a gift of 2,000 pesos or more, you will get the, all the messages of courage plus this book sent to your home. The contact details are on the screen. Tell us, yes, Brother Bo, I want to be your, your partner in ministry. Thank you so, so very much. God bless you. With a gift of courage, you overcome our fear and are willing to take risks as a follower of Jesus Christ. A person with courage is willing to stand up for what is right in the sight of God. The gift of courage allows the people the firmness of mind that is required both in doing good and enduring evil. Fortitude is the moral virtue that ensures firmness in difficulties and constancy in the pursuit of the good. It strengthens the resolve to resist temptations and to overcome obstacles in the moral life. It enables one to conquer fear, even fear of death, and to face trials and persecutions. The Lord is my strength and my song. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Love is power in the name of Jesus. 
There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Come on, we sing. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Come on, let's use this moment to declare that we are free, that we are letting go. We lift up our voices today. Let this be our prayer. We sing, there's an army. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Oh, shout it out. So break every chain, break every chain.
What a joy to be in the presence of God, to be together. I know maybe you're hundreds of miles away, thousands of miles away, but there is no distance in prayer. I want to pray for you right now. Let's come before the Lord in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we present to you all our needs. We present to you all our burdens and we surrender them to you when we know that in faith you are our provider. And so we thank you in advance for every blessing that you will give to us right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for every person watching this episode that your power will flow into their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, receive healing, receive grace, receive provision. Amen and amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much for joining Kerygma TV. Live a fantastic life.